Hi, this is the story how I wanted to try everything which will be in this video, but nothing more than that, just to try. I was given such an old keyboard, and I thought that it would be interesting to refresh its look. It is really dusty and dirty, there are some scuff marks, but it still works pretty well. Before taking the keyboard apart, cleaning and decorating it, I took a picture of its case, because further, it will be really difficult without it. Now we can screw everything off. Actually, I was really curious doing all this, because I'd never really seen what was inside a keyboard. For some reason it wouldn't open, although I thought that I had screwed out all the screws. After some terrible sounds of cracking, like I'd broken all the plastic elements, it finally opened. It was quite entertaining and fascinating to poke the opened keys. There was such an element on top, which I screwed out and removed the main working element. It was this rare case when I didn't wait for the following day and kept filming under the lamplight. Before dyeing, I protected the spot for the diodes with a masking tape. I pressed the tape along the counter and cut the excess off with a knife. The letters on the case were a little voluminous and they weren't stickers, so I didn't manage to peel them off. I was a little worried that they would be seen after the dyeing. Well, we'll see. Eventually, I left them as they were, because there was nothing I could do, so I began removing the keycaps. And you know what? After I'd seen what was inside, I think that I will never type and at the same time eat ever again. It needed a scrupulous clean, because the dust stuck to the keyboard. I filmed this video in December, and it was too cold to dye the keyboard outside, so I went to my basement. First, I dyed everything in black to make the bottom part black too, and renew the coating on the front frame. Now it's much better. You can't imagine how much I like the sprayed spots around artworks after the spraying. Now we need to dye all the caps. It was like a high level of meditation to place these caps and keep them from falling. I dyed them in the same black color. The keys from the upper panel had a different construction, so they were quite shaky, but at least it was possible to literally press them into the cardboard. The carcass now looks so renewed, and the texture turned out nicely rough. quickly put the inner element on its place. I worried a lot about its safety, so I wanted to put it back as soon as possible. But I realized that I had forgotten the order of putting everything back together. Hopefully, I had recorded everything before taking the keyboard apart.
I connected it to my notebook and with bated breath I checked whether everything was alright. I was so worried about it because I didn't have any knowledge how to work with these details which were inside, and I didn't know how my manipulations of taking them out and putting them back would affect them. I was ready to close the frame, but just in time I realized that the bottom part had some spots where it could be seen from above, and I hadn't dyed these spots. Speaking about the case, I suppose that you have been waiting for something super special, unusual and bright, but I think I will disappoint you, because I had one spray which had recently appeared on the market, if I'm not mistaken, so I really wanted to check it out. So this is the hologram spray I had. I decided that a cosmic keyboard was quite an attractive variant. I made lots of thin coats. So that was the reason why some of the keys slightly stuck to the cardboard. And when I was picking them, they reminded me of some kind of mushrooms in a computer game. And the finish was super cool. After the new year, I got back to this project in my new studio. It was high time to make the lettering. For this I bought alphabet nail stickers. Oops, it's the wrong one. It was so difficult to find the stickers with the Cyrillic alphabet. But I found one brand which produced them, and just in case, I bought two sheets of stickers. But later in, I had in white and in silver colors. After I'd put these two variants onto the keyboard, I made a final decision into the favor of the white stickers, because they are more noticeable. I also bought a mold for K caps, because I'd seen absolutely amazing works by Jelly K. HK was like a masterpiece. Of course, I wasn't going to make something super cool, all I wanted was to make a try, as I've said at the beginning of this video. Before creating something super cool, I decided to cast these keys. But before that, I needed to do something with those keys I already had. In fact, looking at the spacebar, I realized that this case wouldn't do. I mean, damn, no way they would ever do. So I put them aside and took up the stickers. First I sorted out the function keys, because they were different in size and it would make the whole mess of caps a little smaller. These stickers are stickers, not sliders, so they didn't need any soaking in water. That's why I used a sharp tool to pick the stickers up and then I stuck them on the buttons. I began with placing a sticker and making it look nice and even, and after that I slightly pressed it. I really enjoyed this process. Seriously, it was the coolest thing I'd done with this keyboard. It was much harder with the buttons with letters, because the initial letters were barely seen anyway but it really helped me to write the correct letters on every button. Speaking about Cyrillic, I used lowercase block letters, because uppercase letters were too big. I didn't take the letters in cursive, because the very first letter I decided to start with, which was the Russian letter U, was simply missing among these stickers. I decided that it was the sign, so I took different letters. Although there was no Russian letter U, but at least it was possible to make it out of T and O. The letters looked truly good on these key buttons. I put the buttons with already attached stickers on the keyboard, so I could see better what had been done already. I'll say it again, but I really enjoyed the process of sticking these letters on. To be honest, I would love to do it again with several more keyboards. Well, this is the result, and now we need to reassemble all these letters. But before that, I needed to do something with the buttons with symbols, because some of the stickers were missing. I didn't want to copy the symbols, because it would have been too noticeable that they had been drawn, and I didn't really want such an effect. 
So I decided to draw something mine and make an unusual and interesting picture, instead of replacing the printed symbols which all of you are definitely familiar with. That was the reason why instead of Windows flag I drew a planet with a flag. And instead of this button, I made a UFO with some rays. This is where I took the inspiration from, and I was super pleased with the way I changed the initial symbol. The arrow buttons I decorated with such triangles, which I glued with a little of super glue. Unfortunately, my biggest fear happened. I lost one of the buttons. I had not a single idea how it could happen, because the most important thing which I had been keeping in my head during this whole project, this keyboard precisely, was to keep the buttons right on their place. It was one of the reasons why I put every button on its place, to be able to see at any moment of time whether everything was on its place. And here I bring the keyboard, put it on the table, and the button is missing. To make its resin duplicate, I took the escape button, which had the same size. The silicone mold won't fit, because the cap made in this mold would have a different bottom, so I had to make the mold based on my button. So I took eye gum silicone paste, because this was the fastest way to make a matte mold, because the artwork will turn out quite matte anyway, no matter what you try to make. I mixed these two masses in 1 to 1 ratio, and at first I decided to fill these two deepenings in the button separately, because there was a risk that the paste won't spread there by itself. Yeah, after a while, when you fix your artwork in it, the paste will start spreading over, sticking to the upper edges of the artwork, it will make the art piece go deeper into it. I fully covered the bottom of the button, and after that, holding it like this, I dipped it into the bigger piece of paste. I also tried to do the same with the arrow buttons. It was before I had sticked on the triangles. It has a bigger hole in the bottom, but anyway, I was partially experimenting, so I simply dipped it into the paste math without additional manipulations. While it was getting hard, and it took about 30 minutes, I kept on drawing on the keycaps. I picked a space bar and drew some tiny stars on it. Well, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And when I wanted to put it back on its place, I found the missing button. It saved me, because um, now you will hear the long because explanation. The silicone melds with my buttons turned out pretty good. As an experiment, I casted them with epoxy resin called Art Pro, but because in the mold there were tiny deepenings, it was a failure. No matter how hard I tried to fill them with tiny drops of resin, there still were air bubbles, and as a result, there wasn't one of the crucial functional details of the button, which means that it wasn't possible to attach this button to the keyboard. In this case, the super liquid resin, which I showed you in the video about secret Petri art techniques, could possibly save the situation. I think it can drain absolutely everywhere you need, because it is super liquid, so air can easily come out, and even this tiny air bubble will be simply replaced by this resin. 
So this resin would be a perfect solution in that situation, but mine was at the summer house. And I didn't really need that button. So I didn't pause this project till I reached my summer house and take this resin, make the buttons, wait till they harden them, blah 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 blah. And keeping this in mind and having all the required buttons, I still didn't make any more resin keys for my keyboard. Well, I could make some colorful buttons, but I didn't make them because they would have turned out really and really thin. I think that I would have even vanished them with my sander, and nothing of this button would have survived. If you watched my video about sanding and polishing, you know that usually you must start with a coarse sander and end with a finer sander. And there are several steps which you need to make to achieve a perfect result. Only while I was editing this video, I realized that actually I could have made a special voluminous keycap and I wouldn't need to sand and polish and rub it off till there are holes in it. But such ideas come into my mind only when I am editing and re-watching the filmed material, and so as a result I rethink everything. Plus, I was upset at that moment, so it also affected me. I was upset because the silicone mold for key buttons didn't fit my keyboard and it also didn't fit my brother's keyboard, so we couldn't do anything for him too. And it made me feel blue so much that I even doubt should I even post the story about this project. But this is my creation. Well, it is quite simple, but maybe it would inspire somebody to go and find in the old attic and old keyboard and make an element of decor out of it. Oh, well, let's stop my fantasy and imagination here. I think that I am not ready to get back to this project right now, because I have lots of other interesting things to explore and make. By the way, it is quite surprising for me why this well, maybe not disappointment, but a total frustration stopped me, because usually everything is just the other way around, such challenges give me energy and motivation to come up with 10 more possible solutions, but it seems like it didn't happen that time. Well, I think it wasn't just the thing I really wanted to make, I don't know. Before attaching the caps, I secure the stickers with transparent varnish. I attached all the buttons to the keyboard, but some of them were a little difficult to press, because the spray paint and varnish got onto the bottom sides, as I was spraying the caps from all the sides really generously. As a result, I made some of these buttons do a little workout. So I was tapping them really hard, and everything became alright quite fast, because the paint was simply rubbing off. Turning the keyboard like this helped me to find all the buttons which stuck. That was how I managed to find every such button and kept pressing it up and down. So, if you want to draw on a keyboard, this is awesome, you can achieve a cool result. And no one will ever know that it was you who made it. But I advise you to cover the bottom part with a piece of masking tape to protect it from anything which could interfere with your further work. The only thing is that the caps will be shaky and you won't put them like I did during the spring, but you can, for instance, glue them to something. I think that you'll find a good solution to this problem. Despite the fact that the silicone mold was too different from my keycaps, I decided to try it anyway, to make a review, so to speak, and it will give me an opportunity to tell you what specificities this work and the mold has, if somebody buys it. For this I took the Italian resin called Art Pro. To be honest, it leaked a little because I had screwed the bottle cap too bad. It didn't really matter because I keep all my resin in zip pockets. Next, I mixed the resin with the hardener. And, thanks to the scales, I could make a super small amount of resin. I poured some resin into a different cup and dyed it in white with an acrylic paint. 
The transparent resin I was mixing pretty actively to achieve the consistency with tons of tiny bubbles to imitate the stars. I casted the mild waste transparent resin and then I added just a little glitter to make a different kind of stars if I can say so. I also took such bath salt, which is actually really and really old, and I decided to make some planets out of it. Next, I add some drops into the white resin and make such swirls. The resin is quite thick already, so the swirls will remain like they are. They won't blur or anything like this. What's interesting, I had mixed a lot of acrylic paint into the resin, and when I was mixing it, it turned into such small flakes, which reminded me of clusters of stars like the Milky Way. Such an amazing effect! When this layer was hard, I mixed some more resin and dyed it with pigments. I took alcohol inks to make black resin, carefully poured all the colors and mixed them with a toothpick. It is desirable to pour resin into the top of this mold in advance, so we could get this upper detail, otherwise, if we do it a little after, there will be a huge air bubble, and the resin won't be able to get there, which means we won't have this detail. It was also a must to pour resin into these corners, to make it spread better. There was actually one more variant, to pour a lot of resin at once, so it would displace this air from the corners. And I think it's probably the best option, because there definitely won't be any of such empty holes. In general, it is possible to make caps from this mold quite fascinating. But the important thing is to find where to use them, because it would be quite sad if they just lay around. Maybe one day I will find a keyboard which will be a perfect match for them, so I could gain more enthusiasm. But for now I can offer you only such a review. I was curious to look at these caps closely, and what I can say is that these clusters of stars look absolutely magnificent. The button which helped us to make this silicone melt has quite an interesting texture. It was definitely not sanded on the sides. Well, I do love to gaze at such things in macro. Well, that was the video about keyboard decorating. I got very nervous about this video because I hadn't done anything special, I just told you about how awesome it is to put stickers on keycaps. But on the other hand, I think that this video will be a good example that not every creation of mine turns out a success. There are lots of situations when I want to create something, but at the same time, not that much. Well, you saw that at first I started making one thing, then I moved to the other one, and I even casted these molds with UV resin. It was a new experience to me, because I tried to film under the artificial lamp light, and usually I do everything in daylight. And I didn't really like that. So I didn't touch upon this topic much in the main part of the video. Also, UV resin proved that it is super cool when it comes to making a layer after a layer, starting from the bottom and going up. 
but casting silicone molds a layer after a layer is not the best idea because no matter how stubborn I am with my desire to cast this mold with UV resin anyway and make everything look super pretty, you can't escape physics. It means that sooner or later your UV resin will shrink and become smaller in size because it is affected by UV light. So I didn't elaborate on this in the video. Well... This is it. Many thanks to my sponsors for support. I love all of you this much. Bye.